Okay, good morning. My name is Ruben Richards. I'm standing in a village called Clan William in the Cedarburg, and I'm going to share with you uh, some reflections uh, around December 16th. It is 16th of December today, 16th of December 2022. In South Africa, this is a public holiday. Uh, I think if we were in England, they would call it a bank holiday. It's a public holiday, an official paid holiday in South Africa. And it's a holiday that has a number of names attached to it. So we're going to spend some time thinking through and feeling through this holiday. It is the most contentious holiday in the history of South Africa. This is a holiday that is literally written in blood. In fact, it is a holiday around a, a battle called the Battle of Blood River. So, welcome to the seminar. Um, I normally need about five days to teach a seminar, but uh, looking at you, um, your concentration span will be about two minutes and then be done. But welcome. So, I'm going to be dishing you up a menu of information today. And today is a day sponsored by an organization that I'm associated with. It's called Cedarburg Eerste, Cedarburg First. It is a resident association. Um, and and so I've been asked to uh, wear the apron of the organization just to uh, make sure that we are all properly uh, served today with this menu of, uh, this buffet really of, of information that I'm going to share with you. So, as I said, today is Reconciliation Day. Reconciliation. Reconciliation Day. And today is 2022. Um, it is the 16th of December. Now, what happened? And on the 16th of December, that has given rise to this day. So let me take you to 1994, and you will know a man by the name of Mandela, president, our past president, uh, former president Nelson Mandela. In 1994, with the advent of democracy, Mandela renamed this day. And it was called Reconciliation Day. It wasn't always called Reconciliation Day. I'm going to go to the bottom where we started, 1838, because that's where, we, that's where it all starts. The Battle of Blood River. Okay? The Battle of Blood River is where it starts. Now you can do the math from 1838 to 1994 is about 157 years or something like that, at least at least 150 years, so one and a half century. It's a long time. <clears throat> so from 1838 to 1994, this day, the 16th of December, has been a day that I describe now as the battle for the soul. Battle for the soul of South Africa. Because this battle has been interpreted differently by depending who you speak to. So let me give you the one narrative. The one narrative is the Afrikaner, white, Boer, Voortrekker, whatever, however you want to describe the white people of those days. 
They were four trekkers at the time in 1838. They were trekking through the country from the south in the Cape, and they were trekking northwards away from British colonialism. So just keep that in mind. They were on their way. And this battle of Blood River takes place as they journey to the north of the country. The summary of the battle is that somewhere around 470 Afrikaners, and when I say Afrikaners, I'm talking about the white people of Dutch origin, about 470 of them, 473 I think to be exact, went into war against, the number given is around 20,000 Zulu warriors, or Zulu impis, Zulu soldiers, if you want to call it that. And uh, what are the odds? 400 Afrikaners against 20,000 Zulus. The Afrikaners prayed and made a a covenant, a promise to God that if God delivers them victory or gives them victory in this war against this huge enemy, then they will build a church. They vow to build a church in honor of God. And they eventually did that because they won the war. So I'm giving you the, the end and the beginning at the same time. And they built that church in Peter Marisburg, and Maritzburg is named after one of the Afrikaners who were part of this uh, poor trekker group. That's where Peter Maritzburg comes from. Interesting. So, what do you do in the face of 20,000 Zulu warriors with, armed with spears and a formidable uh, uh, Zulu army? And you put yourself in a lager, kind of a D-shape, and there's only 400 of you. Of course, the history books often don't uh, forget to mention that the 400 white trekkers had almost a thousand other people helping them, including Zulus, coloreds, and so forth and so on. Um, and I can give you the, the exact statistics. In fact, let me let me read it to you. I don't remember the numbers the numbers offhand. Um, there was at least 700 horses, 640 oxen. Um, there were uh, 500 Zulus or more than that. I mean, there was a lot of people of color helping the white people win this war. Okay? But that's not taking anything away from the bravery of the white group. You must be seriously committed to your cause. If you're 400 people and you're facing 20,000 people. So let's, let's honor that kind of commitment. The basis of the commitment is problematic, uh, which we'll come to a bit later in the, in the seminar. But commitment nevertheless. So they faced these Zulus on the 16th of December, 1838, and they win the war. Um, the, the, the lager was built some meters away from the Nkome River. That turned into blood because these thousands of Zulus fell into that river, that gorge, and it just became a river of blood. And that's where the, the name Blood River comes from. But the Zulu name for the river is Nkome. So that's the story. 400 odd white Afrikaners, poor trekkers, fight against 20,000 Zulus. They win the war and they say, God delivered us, and we will honor our God. We made a vow to God that we would build uh, a church and that we would remember this day as a Sabbath day forever and ever. And as we speak today, 2022, uh, not too far from here, there would be a group of people who would be commemorating today with that image in mind. They would they would. Remember the Afrikaner version of that event. There'd be a group of Zulus who would also remember that day. Because the first commemoration of this day was given a name. It was called Dingan's Day. 
Now I'm giving you some clues into our second module that we will get to. So Dingan was the Zulu leader that deceived the Afrikaners when they came to see him in January, February earlier that year. And um, Peter Kif was the leader of the poor trekkers, the Afrikaners. They went to go and see Dingan. And I'm going to just fast forward the story for you. Um, Dingan who was a very treacherous uh, uh, Zulu leader, um, had uh, invited these, these whites in under false pretenses and then had them murdered. 69 or so of them. Leadership wiped out. And so this Battle of Blood River, almost 12 months later, is a revenge attack on the killing of the Peter Tiff and his leadership that came to ask for land and they came to ask for animals and, and so forth. Remember, these were poor trekkers that were moving through the country from Cape Town, moving northwards to Johannesburg, or what was then called the Transvaal. And they're now in this area called what we today call KwaZulu Natal. So that's where this battle happens. It happens in KwaZulu Natal or Durban, uh, depending what, what language you want to give to it. Okay? So that KwaZulu Natal includes the Peter Marisburg area, the Durban area, previously also known as Port Natal. So that's where KwaZulu Natal comes from. Uh, so I, I mentioned all these variables because you must be able to locate this story within its historical context. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. 